Okay, so here we are entering into the second round of Founding Fathers. And things are starting to coalesce a little bit in the sense that some of the players are actually, and this is kind of reminds me of Kratos, some of the players are now actually beginning to have some sort of ideology in a sense of one sort or another. So, for example, and by the way, this went up from the committee room, and we get to place these on their historical side in the two rooms. Um, so, for example, we've got an anti-federalist position here, which I want to make sure anti-federalist positions win. Now, right now, there's two of them versus one federalist position. Not that that really matters. The fact that there's two federal, uh, two anti-federalist um, articles is what's important. Really what they're competing against here is the small state articles. And likewise, this guy is in the small state position. So they've already carved out some potential points, well, in places where they're going the the uh, the Constitution is already aiming in that direction, but that doesn't seem to be where the majority of the points are going to lie. They're not going to lie in getting your proposals necessarily forwarded. When I looked at the victory points, and maybe I'm wrong here, um, you have to have the most uh, tokens in that. That's a lot of effort to get maybe five points, right? Uh, is It's not that each token is worth five, right? At the end of the game, by having the most, uh, the bonus for each faction depends, yeah. So the most that this token can be worth is five points, whereas someone was able to pull a few points off of a single card play. Obviously, the debates are more of a loser's uh, option in some cases. Now, the failure to go into here is big because everybody just scored for voting on one thing, and we're not going to see that in this next one, I don't think. People are going to say, ah, I want to be on the losing side, so I sweep into the convention and can maybe get my way there over time. And that's going to be where the deals are cut, I guess, and that's what's being represented by that makes a lot more sense to me than what I had been seeing. All right, let me uh, push on with some of the other players and I'll come back and talk as necessary. Okay, so we're beginning to see things filling out a little bit as people are playing. We've got one person throwing in the debates because he had a card that allowed him to jump up two in the debate. And I don't know how big an advantage that is. It's still just one chip at the end, but uh, at least it's one that you won't likely lose. Now, here I'm looking at Robert Sherman, or Roger Sherman. He's got some interesting positioning here. Most intriguing to him is this card for Robert Yates, Defender of the Articles. Flip over the article currently under consideration in the Assembly Room, reversing its bias, and move all state delegations with the chip voted from yay to nay and vice versa. Gain a point if it's anti-federalist. Well, this does two things. One, it gives him a point by flipping it to anti-federalist, which he wants to do. Uh, but for a single point, that may or may not be enough value, but it also makes it more likely that it's going to be defeated in its anti-federalist bias, which is actually towards his line because he has a point sitting here in this. Now, of course, that keeps him from floating down here, so there's always this trade-off, but he's looking at that as more likely to generate him points if he moves it into the anti-position. So he's going to go ahead with that. There are cards that are kind of nice to hold towards the end and keep your play in hand. For example, this one, a nation's shame. If any state delegation from Georgia, North Carolina, or South Carolina have already declared their votes, the controlling player loses a point each. And that cost both purple and gray a victory point on here. Uh, is that worth a point yourself? No, it's not, but it, uh, it might be as good a play as could have been made, and that's what I judged with Madison, probably incorrectly. Anyway, interesting thing came to the uh, Sherman player. He didn't have anything he really wanted to play. If he plays anti, it ends it, but it ends in a three-way... Well, 
maybe it's worth it. I was going to say it ends in a four-way tie, but that's not that bad a thing. He gets points. The problem is, what states does he have? Connecticut, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. So he can't cast a vote anywhere because he can't exceed and switch the vote on any t table. So what he did was he threw the, his, uh, his, I don't know what they're called, dude, uh, his main character card to get an additional influence marker. And that gives him another one. It's something I think you have to do eventually, but I'm not sure. At least as influence begins pooling up here. Uh, because he just didn't have anything he could gain points with. Now, granted, he could do some debating and maneuver that way, but uh, I don't think that's terribly valuable, so I held off on that. One thing to note, I've got this uh, David Barely, car Barely card, which at the end of the round, he's going to get all the debate tokens that nobody else has claimed. So that may be an incentive for other people to debate. Anyway, I have to decide what Sherman's taking from the pool of delegates. Just saw a flip in the vote. Madison was able to flip Virginia's vote. This is a powerful thing if he can get the victory here because he gets two victory points and takes one away. Plus, he's got cards in two different states. So he saw that as useful. It wiped out his thing, though, and it made his, his last influence marker, and it made him play his Madison card because he had another Virginia leader, but one who could only be played on the opposite side of this issue. And he's kind of in favor of this issue. So, all right. I uh, guess we continue onward. And now this may be how the game's supposed to play out in actuality. We've got almost this tie. We've got people playing cards, removing votes. For example, uh, let me find the Maryland swung vote in opposition and replace the other Maryland one just with one guy. Um, but as it stands right now, what we're seeing is we're at a place where each side is sitting with just, there's just one state remaining, New Hampshire. If it goes on either side, that's the end of this. Now, of course, there could be swinging. People could still play multiple cards for a single state to try to push that state over. But, uh, you know, there's not a lot of New Hampshire cards in the deck, right? <laughs> there's uh, only two. So without either switching a state or bringing New Hampshire into this, it's just not going to happen. So somebody who's held a handful of cards for a, state, for a key state can switch it over to their side and maybe win this, this event if they've got the right cards, the ones they can put on that side. Alternatively, we could call for military role. George Washington declares the matter issue, the, the, the issue uh, closed. Um, basically, he's able to push the issue in the direction it's already leaning, which is towards the positive. Uh, there's one more vote towards the positive than towards the negative. And since the white player at uh, Madison is, seeks, uh, is set to gain more by passing this, he wants to do that. Now, let's go through the steps where it's kind of a little more interesting. First of all, I have to pick a card from here. So let me take a quick look. He, He's a bunch of Federalists. He's not terribly interested in a bunch of Federalists. He's also not terribly interested in Georgia. Everybody's been avoiding this card. We're going to have a reshuffle very shortly. I don't want to do that because I don't want to break the video. Okay. So first we do the assembly room. And what happens here? Well, this passes. We get one, two, three points for white. gets his cubes back. Blue also gets the ray. And he gets his cubes back. And then little Pickney seems to be split on sides. Picks himself up two points because he's got two delegates in that side. And he loses these. Okay, that's great. Now all these cubes float down here to discuss what's going to happen here. And we can clean these up. And yeah, we get to shuffle everybody together this way, right? Okay. Um, now, for the committee room itself, well, we've got a tie here, so nobody's going to get any special ability. Nobody gets any points off these guys. They're just kind of out of play now, which is kind of a bone. Um, 
you hope to win this, but nobody gets the choice to flip this, so it passes as is and is a large state star. And we can see we've got three small states. Uh, three anti-federalists and one of each of the others. Um, now for the debates. Well, White gets a large state anti-federalism. Oh, i got to be careful. I'm going to give him a second one. We'll give him this one because nobody's winning that. And then Gray, wherever he is, picks up an anti-federalist as well. So, there we've got some some rea uh, some actions from those. We pull out uh, the new articles, and you know, part of me kind of would like to discuss each of the articles as they come up and think about them. But you know, in terms of the game itself, it's not really that important. I could see this being fun reading these out. They're not as much fun as the ones in Credo, though, because quite honestly. The choices facing the Constitution uh, don't feel as radically different. I'm sure there might be a couple in here, but you know, the, this, for example, the choice whether the president's limited to one term, which uh, indeed passed here. The president should have a single term of seven years by the uh, Congress assembled. Oh shall be selected by the Congress. Very interesting. Anyway, uh, that's, you know, a, a, a different thing, and it's interesting to look at. But there aren't that many options here. In Credo, there's just so many different things, and some of them are really out there because some of the, the Christian heresies were really, really odd. And it's it, it's really interesting to see those and then see this, this uh, you know, Credo be formed out of this kind of mishmash. I know some people would find it, um, you know, somewhat blasphemous just to play the game. But it, it's, a, it's an enjoyable aspect, especially if you do know a little bit about the history um, of the councils and, and, and how that was eventually decided upon. And how some of these were actually, you know, the popular view of the bishops, but somehow got swayed by some pretty extreme circumstances. It's a good game for that. But rather than plug that, let's uh, move on with this one. And I'm going to load this up because it's about the length I like to do. And we're ready to move into another round.